Okay, guys, just to recap where we finished off, okay, you are going to get an investigative question, okay, whatever. It's, it's the whole scientific exploration, blah, 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 blah. They are basics. If you know these basics, I promise you, you will get, they are always out of 13, 14, 15, even 16 marks. It doesn't matter what it's about. And as I said previously, it, it, it could be about snails sailing across a, a, um, a, a carpet. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you've got a scientific process that takes place. Clearly, they're going to use something that's within your syllabus. So when we looked here, we looked at diabetes insipidus. But remember, you learn about diabetes mellitus, which is when the, there's a problem with insulin. Okay? But your diabetes insipidus means that you end up with very dilute urine. Okay, and this is a disease caused by a lack of antidiuretic hormone. We went through anti means against, diuretic means to wee, and hormone. So this hormone doesn't want you to wee. It wants to keep water in your body. So when you, it's hot, you got, your body's going to make lots of antidiuretic hormone, and it's released, but it's actually produced by the hypothalamus and stored and released by the pituitary gland, which is our master gland, okay? But it's anti-weeing. It doesn't want you to lose the water. So on a cold day, you're gonna have lots of antidiuretic hormone. On a hot day, you're gonna have, uh, uh, um, sorry, on a, on a hot day, you're going to have lots of antidiuretic hormone. It wants to keep the water inside. And on a cold day, you have less antidiuretic hormone because you want to get rid of all that water. Otherwise, you'll bloat and you'll, you'll become a little water baby. You'll just float, a, you'll just be water, water, water. Okay, so when they talk about plasma, they're talking about the blood. Okay, so why? Because antidiuretic hormone is a hormone, and hormones are secreted by endocrine glands. And endocrine glands are ductless, so they secrete hormones, which are chemical messengers, directly into the blood. Okay, we then look at this, and it says why the experiment takes place, how to figure out what the aim is, and how to produce a conclusion. Because they can ask you the aim, and they can ask you the conclusion, but this is what they are going to give you. So scientists wanted to do what? They wanted to determine the effects of this disease on the volume of urine that a person produces per day. Now look, they carried out with five males, nice sample, participants over 30 days. So that makes it a good sample size, okay? I'm going to put here, good sample size, okay? And this talks to the reliability of the experiment. Then they were a similar age and the similar weight. The minute you can add the word same in front of anything, it talks to the validity. And when you have an increase in the number of times or you can calculate the average, it talks about the reliability of the experiment, which they always ask, by the way. Okay, then they're going to ask you the dependent and the independent variable. Now, your dependent variable will be the lack of ADH, which is the focus of the experiment. But your dependent variable, I said you must remember this word, D R O M Y. It's a nonsense word. It's a nemim. So what we have here, we say the D is for dependent or R for responding or resulting variable that is observed or measured and plotted on the x-axis. So if you have to plot it, it goes on the x-axis, okay? Now, looking at this, say normal urine production is between 600 and 1,800 milliliters per day. Look here, so this person is going to be, well, that's normal, this is normal, this is normal, that's normal, but look at this one here, 2.9, okay? So that's 2,900 uh, or 2.9 liters, so 2,900 milliliters, it's almost double. So that's the person that has this, this diabetes insipidus. So then we looked at here, which person and why it was number one, why they had produced the most urine, 
Um, we said what plasma was. Well, it means the blood. Therefore, this is an endocrine gland. Uh, identify the dependent variable. Well, look, here it is. There's the dependent variable. They give it to you. You must just know where to look for it. Okay. Then we looked at um, identify two factors that should be kept constant. It's anything that you're going to add the same. So we went through the, um, the same, that they are, they have the same exercise. Because now you've got your five guys, you've chosen them. They're, this, they're relatively the same age, the same weight, etc. So now we have to look at the things that we, in the experiment, that we must keep constant. That's going to be, um, they must stay in, in, in a place that has the same temperature, okay? The environmental temperature. They must do the same amount of exercise. They must eat the same food, so the same diet. Um, this, drink the same amount of water. Drink the same type of liquids. Okay, you can't give one beer and the other one only drinks water and the other one drinks Coke. Um, they must all drink the same liquids. Uh, so, and they're, they're just four. I mean, you can come up with so many, but it's whatever is going to impact on that experiment. You must make sure that what they are doing they're doing the same. All right, same amount of hours of sleep, uh, that, that, that the measurements are done at the same time, at, um, in the same place, by the same person. All right, so then provide one precaution, okay, or safety measure that the scientists needed to take when they conducted the investigation. Oh, man, you know, I'm <laughs> wearing gloves, the scientists, hopefully they wore gloves when they were working with somebody else's urine. Um, make sure that they don't, that, that, that all the, the samples were clearly marked. I mean, like, really, you think of that there are 101 different precautions that you could have gone through here. Um, you could have, since you're dealing with people and you're making them uh, or checking the, the volume of the urine that they're providing, and one of these persons are, are ill, they actually have a disease, maybe ensure that you have a doctor on call 24 hours for, during the duration of this experiment. So come up with a precaution that makes sense. Don't just, otherwise you just won't get that mark. Then state two ways in which the scientists improved the reliability of their investigation. So how would they have improved it? Well, we, we actually, I actually marked it for you here. Uh, I need another color. Let's go with navy. Um, we looked at, they did it over 30 days. Okay, so that is a biggie there. And what did they do? They calculated the average daily urine production. So we've got 30 days. And they calculated the average. Average urine production. Okay, then there it is. It's given to you. Boom, 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 boom. Thanks for coming. So when you get a question like this, a scientific investigation, people read it carefully and know what you are looking for. Your dependent variable will be given to you. Your independent variable is given to you. Uh, um, you are also told uh, um, the validity, what makes it valid, what makes it reliable. You must know how to do an aim from what you're given. You must know how to write a conclusion. Did they actually manage to do this? Because you were determining an, or the investigation was to determine or to investigate. And then did it happen? Yes, it did. It does or it did. And you just reword those sections.